Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. It's nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what is up guys? So I hope everyone is doing well. It's been a while since I've done a reading for the Greater Collective here on YouTube. So um, I was feeling inspired to do that today. So that's what we're gonna get into. Yes, awesome. Um, I don't have an agenda other than just uh, pulling some cards for the greater collective to see what the universe, what spirit, your spirit guides, your angels, your ancestors, whomever uh, you resonate with, God, source, creator, the angels, whatnot, what messages they have for you at this time. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is also a timeless reading. However, as I'm saying that right now, um, something about August, either August or autumn, so the fall. Now, um, August is the last month of summer. Well, no, not really, because I believe the, um, the fall, uh, let's see, spring equinox, summer solstice, fall, the fall equinox, right? Yes, because it's the fall equinox, spring equinox, summer solstice, winter solstice. Okay. I believe the fall equinox is around the 20th of, or something of September, something like that, somewhere around there. Um, so, but I did hear August slash autumn. All right. So keep that in mind. This may have something to do with like this for you. This may be predictive, something that could be coming by the time we hit August or autumn or it could be something that happened previously in a previous August, August or August, autumn situation, okay? All right, so let's get into this. Let me uh, do this real quick here for a second. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well, I also just heard the fall is coming. Um, and of course, that sounds pretty ominous. Um, the fall is coming. Okay, we'll see what that means, yes? Let's get into this here. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Um, if you would like to get more readings from me, from um, my guides or from the universe as through me as a channel, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, please, if you end up resonating with or enjoying this reading please make sure to tap the like button for me also if you would like to leave a comment you are more than welcome to do so that could help me pick up on more of your energies in the future and you can also join us over on patreon patreon.com slash divine conversations yeah last shuffle here okay autumn august and or Although I do feel like that's con this is this is connected to August or autumn, but the fall is coming. Okay, what's going on, Spirit? What is this message for the collective? The fall is coming, August slash autumn. Okay, what's this message here, please, Spirit? Okay. Okay, so far this seems pretty positive. Uh, the first two cards that came out here, you do have the Two of Wands with the Three of Pentacles. All right. Um, now, this kind of already feels somewhat similar to the message that we have that came through most recently over on Patreon, which is about stepping out on your own uh, being independent and potentially moving away from some sort of community or communal mindset or communal setting. That has been a bit of a common theme since we had the solar eclipse or at least since we went through eclipse season, which started with the lunar eclipse and then ended with the solar eclipse. Um, Please excuse me, all the sniffles. Um, okay, now 
you do have the Ten of Wands at the bottom of the deck as an overall energy. Okay, but let me tell you, explain what else has come out here. So we have the Two of Wands, the Three of Pentacles. We also have the Knight of Cups and the Four of Wands. This has fallen out on top of the Two of Wands, okay? So it seems here that, yeah, Spirit, I just heard it again. The fall is coming. So it seems here that... I would say this Four of Wands and Knight of Cups feels like a level of stability um, and even readiness within yourself, a level of foundation that you have, that you have recently found, that you have recently come to. Four of Wands, followed by the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups feels for you or for the viewer or for whomever this is resonating with. This could either be you or this could be someone connected to your energy that I'm picking up on or that this message is for. But... It feels like with the Knight of Cups here, there seems to be there's a readiness to move forward from a more heart centered space. This could resonate for you on a romantic level. Um, and if that's the case, uh, this might lead to a breakup. Because it feels like someone is finally ready here to make some sort of decision for themselves to move on. I just heard to move on to a certain location, to move on to what's right for them, I also just heard. The fall is coming. <laughs> okay, this also could be some sort of marriage situation. Um, because because now when I'm think when I listen to when I hear that and I think the fall is coming and I and I, I I feel into this energy maybe you are maybe you have plans on getting married in the fall and in that case it still feels kind of ominous because the fall because when I feel through that I feel well the fall is coming that means kind of like the clock is ticking so I don't know if maybe you've been dragging your feet on getting plans together or the planning process has just been slow or arduous, but there is something about burden here with the Ten of Wands being at the bottom of the deck, underneath that being the Seven of Cups. Okay, so ultimately, regardless as to how this may resonate for you, the fall is coming feels like ultimately there needs to be a decision. A decision needs to be made. Either, well, okay. A decision needs to be made and the, that, that phrase was finished by, by the fall. Okay. Next thing I'm being taken to here is the three of pentacles. And with that, I'm hearing, I'm feeling what works best for you. For some of you, Okay, well, part of the message here is if this is resonating for you in terms of getting married or planning a wedding, because I feel like this is and maybe maybe this is maybe the deadline here for you is you are wondering if you should propose to your partner, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. Like, obviously, some people are more traditional in the sense that the man or masculine energy, if it's a same sex couple, would be the one to propose. But. That's just speaking from a traditional point of view, and you may not resonate with that. You may resonate more with a non-traditional point of view, okay? So don't get caught up in that. Um, for somebody here, it may be a situation in which you have set a deadline. If my partner, say if you're a more traditional individual, if my partner does not propose to me by the fall, then maybe it's just over, okay? Um, for others of you, this is, you are in fact planning a wedding, but the team members that you have working with you may not necessarily be the best fit. That's kind of the strongest thing that I'm feeling here. Okay, if this resonates for you on a marriage level, and marriage would be represented here by the Four of Wands, okay? Um, but if this is not, well, it still could be romantic even if it's not marriage. And maybe if it is marriage, you are in a mindset of, I want to get married or I want to find a life partner. I want to have a long, a, a more permanent long-term relationship, or you just want to have a long-term relationship. Okay. The question here is, because there is a decision that needs to be made. 
and someone's heart is open enough, I feel like, even if they're not sharing that with other people, someone's heart is open enough for them to be truthful and honest with themselves about some sort of decision which that needs, needs to be made in terms of which direction to go in. The question here is, is this a team effort? Are you guys truly working together as, ooh, I heard as you are meant to be? Now, that's kind of loaded. The phrase, are we working together as we are meant to be? Because this takes us then to the Ten of Wands, which is the overall energy at the bottom of the deck. And this is why that is a loaded question. Because in some cases, yes, you may have a very grounded, down-to-earth level, not emotionally charged view of what working together means. But in other cases, maybe you're being a little unreasonable. So for some, maybe you do have a really balanced idea of what a, a strong level of teamwork would be in terms of your relationship. And unfortunately, those requirements are not being met. Someone is being left with more of the burden than they should be. Whereas for some of you, you have a little bit of a less balanced view of this element of teamwork and that's what's causing this energy of burden now this could be two individuals within the same relationship one person like in either person either party has a different view of what a strong level of teamwork would be for a select few of you and i think this may be why the love the energy of traditionalism came up you know, traditionalism in terms of proposal, the masculine or the man proposes to the woman, maybe somebody here is coming out of that mindset, is starting to recognize that the traditional roles between masculine and feminine man and woman are not suited for them any longer. And it's causing some level of confusion. Ten of Wands, Seven of Cups is underneath this Ten of Wands. This is at the bottom of the deck. Now, Underneath the Seven of Wands, you do have the King of Cups. The King of Cups and the Page of Cups. And then the Hierophant. This could very well have to do with marriage. Or some sort of commitment or some sort of traditionalism. But, and okay, well, let me say this. So whomever here is in the King of Cups energy because I'm seeing the King of Cups and the Page of Cups as two sides, the two individuals in this situationship or relationship. I see the King of Cups as the individual who's standing here with their heart open, asking themselves, which direction do I want to go in? Being in a very stable position, a stable energy to say, okay, what, what do I do now? Where do I go from here? And you are here in this King of Cups energy, emotionally mature, emotionally balanced, emotionally stable and strong, and still asking yourself the real questions here. I really feel like this individual, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter, but this individual who is represented by the King of Cups here recognizes the burden and then, and, and also may recognize the confusion that is created or the result of this burden and this individual or you um is showing up as the king of cups because you're taking a very emotionally balanced perspective point of view in terms of handling this or relieving yourself of this confusion and or burden whereas the other person here is in the page of cups very immature very lacking in awareness and I get an energy of not even really wanting to evolve, not even really wanting to step up, to line up, to grow up even, wanting to keep things traditional. And maybe very manipulative here. Oh boy. All right, well we have a situ, I'm just, I'm literally, I, I, I told you guys, I don't have an agenda. I didn't have an agenda for this reading other than to just sit down and channel a message for the greater collective. And for those of you who know me, I have spent five years of my career here as a reader professionally 
well, not all of those five years, but most of those five years avoiding re relationship and love readings. But that's what the greater collective needs. And if I'm going to be of service to the greater collective, then I have to, I have to meet the collective where they are. So, and I don't mean that in any sort of derogatory or offensive way. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to be real with you. What I feel coming through, because I'm at the bottom of the deck now, what I feel coming through here is, is we have this page of cups, right? This page of cups and the Hierophant. Somebody wants to keep things traditional, but they want to keep it traditional. And this is really, bar this feels really barbaric. This feels like we're going back to like the 1950s and 1960s, um, <clears throat> which is funny because I've been playing a lot of Fallout lately. Total sidebar. We could talk that, about that lately, but later, but it's because of, you know, the new Fallout series that came out. Love it. Anyway. Um, traditionalism. Somebody does not want to grow. Somebody does not want to expand. Somebody does not want to... I heard remove or relieve themselves of this traditional, traditionalist way of thinking. Take it as it resonates. Okay, the Page of Cups to the Hierophant. And then we have the Magician and the Devil. Okay. So someone here is actively being very, I don't, you know what? I'm not even going to try and censor this. It's so crazy. Every time I come to do a reading for the collective, my nails are always dirty. Anyway, sorry guys. Um, somebody here is being manipulative. Somebody here is being manipulative. Now, the bright side of this, there's a bright side? Yeah, there's a bright side. There is absolutely a bright side because however somebody is being manipulative here, it's causing another person to actually wake up. So this is a karmic, this is a karmic contract, okay? Um, and it's a karmic contract in which, a karmic relationship, a karmic situationship in which Somebody is being provided the opportunity to wake up, understand who it is that they are, who it is they have been, and grow. Now, I will say, generally speaking, all karmic relationships, all karmic contracts, whether you realize it on the surface, on the surface or not, are an opportunity to learn, grow, and expand, and then relieve yourself, uh, like, escape. <laughs> yeah, escape that karmic loop. Doesn't always happen that way. Um, more times than not, people end up just recycling through that karmic energy, that karmic cycle, until they finally start to see the brighter side or wake up, in a sense. And that seems to be what's happening here for the person that is in this King of Cups energy. And the surefire sign that you are waking up out of the sleep out of the slumber, out of the karmic relationship is if you rec if you identify with this King of Cups energy. Emotionally stable, secure, aware, and mature. And even if you're not saying this to your partner for fear of retribution, I get that, but internally you are recognizing the burden, you're recognizing the confusion, and you're starting to ask the questions. You're starting to ask the real mature questions here. And you are starting to take or at least be willing to take responsibility for your own role in this karmic loop, your involvement in this situation. And now you're starting to ask the questions, not only of your partner, but of yourself, okay? That's a surefire way to know that you are in this King of Cups energy. Whereas your partner here, or this other person is avoiding, is immature, would rather listen to the status quo than be a free thinker and think for themselves. And on top of that is actively being manipulative to keep the situation as it is, the magician to the devil. Okay. 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 Um, I want to go further. So I'm going to put all of this back in. Should I use another deck? Yes, I should. Okay. Because I want to... The manipulative energy is real. Ooh, okay, so for somebody here, you may have an active engagement going on. And you have until the fall, or you have until August, for some of you, to end this engagement. Because maybe that's when your marriage is planned for. 
for others of you, Okay, for others of you, it's just that the fall is coming. The fall of this relationship is coming. The end times, I'm seeing the tower now. So there isn't necessarily a deadline. For some of you, there is a deadline. For others, there isn't. Take it as it resonates, okay? Let's get into this. I want to start by um, clarifying. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So on the split here, I am going to shuffle this deck, but on the split here, we have the four of wands again to the queen of wands. Now. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm starting to understand this spread a little bit more because like I said, in the beginning of the reading, we have, we started with the two of wands. Well, we started with the two of wands and then the three of pentacles came out after that. But then continuing, we got the Knight of Cups and the Four of Wands. And these, all, these two fell out on the two, two of Wands. This is one person here. And it's so funny. It's so funny. When I started, sat down to start doing this reading, I was kind of getting a you versus them vibe. But that was the last reading that I did for YouTube. So I was kind of, well, one of, I think. So I was kind of like, mm, maybe I'm just picking up on the past. But now this is looking like a you versus them situation because the three of pentacles feels like the other person. But it feels like the individual that's here in the two of wands is questioning, two of wands, knight of cups, four of wands, is questioning if being with the other, if you're really compatible with the other person. Really, that's what it is, okay? And now we have the four of wands again with the queen of wands on the split. And this feels like it pertains to the individual that's in the Knight of Cups, Four of Wands, Two of Wands, and the King of Cups. What is it that you want? You are in a much better, you have grown. Listen, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a woman to identify with the Queen of Wands. All you have to be is an individual who is self-confident enough to know what they want and to allow it to gravitate towards them to embody the vibration and allow it to gravitate towards them. Okay, so this, it could either be that this relationship or situationship, we'll say, that you were in has helped you to get to this Queen of Wands energy of, I know what it is I want now, or is helping you get into this energy of, I, have, I, I either know what it is that I want or I have a greater idea of what it is that I want and I'm becoming confident enough, especially, especially with the Four of Wands energy, right? The solidity, the solidity, the foundation, spiritual, expressive, creative foundation within yourself, confidence, self-belief, queen of wands, to allow yourself to attract what it is that you want, which also means allowing yourself to let go of what it is you know you do not want or what it is you know that is not working. And quite frankly, for some of you, I'm hearing is never going to work, right? Fundamental differences. And if you resonate with the energy of it's never going to work, that's because of fundamental differences. You may not have had those fundamental differences when you first got together or when this first, when this relationship first started, but now you have grown or someone here has grown and the other person has stayed stagnant, stayed stuck or stayed the same. And now you no longer share those fundamental, those fundamentals. Now they are fundamental differences between you. And it's never going to work because of that. I'm hearing in some cases for some of you, even if that person shows up and does the work, it's still not going to work between the two of you. And that's probably because I, I'm, I'm seeing the world now. It's because if that, part of the, our, if that part of it resonates with you, it's because too much has gone on between the two of you in the course of this relationship and getting to this place that you're like, no, this just isn't going to work. I'd rather go off on my own. Whomever here is embodying this Queen of Wands, King of Cups energy is really just wanting to go off on their own. I feel like is wanting to be single for a while. You may actually be married to this person or this person may be married to you. I don't know, take it as it resonates because ju I just heard that, that just came through. Fundamental differences, okay. Let me get this three shuffles now. Now, ooh, nine of cups with this four of wands now. What is, what is your wish fulfillment? I feel like somebody here, this independent person, is looking for more fulfilling aspects. Is actually willing to fulfill their heart's desires now. Especially, that's especially why the king, the knight, excuse me, the knight of cups showed up for this person. 
you're willing to, you are more willing, much more willing than you have ever ha have been before to fulfill your heart's desire. And for some of you, you are connected to a man or a masculine energy who is extremely controlling, is basically a dream killer. The type of manipulative individual that if you were to tell them your dreams or what it is you actually want to pursue, they would find a way to put the kibosh on that. Um, okay, five of pentacles did show itself because this individual, I didn't mention it, but I'm going to mention it now because it makes sense. Because this man or masculine energy that you are connected to is very much in a lack mentality energy. Um, had a childhood most likely in which their dreams were shot down by their friends, their family members, their peers, most likely their, their elders. And they were never allowed to pursue their dreams. This may be a very successful, um, materially successful individual, but they're not successful by doing what it is that that resonates with their heart. They're successful because they allowed everyone else or their, their elders, will say, to tell them who to be and how to live this life and what their definition of success means for them. So the reason why they shoot your dreams and desires down is because they never had the freedom to do that themselves. And so, number one, they do it because that's what they know. That's, you know, the training, the programming, programming that goes on in their head. But number two, they do it because they don't want you going after pursuing your dreams because they know, number one, it's either going to take, take you away from them and or it's going, you're going to be successful at it and they're going to be real upset. Five, five of pentacles. Misery loves company. Uh, very much like that, that proverbial, the, the saying where like if you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and one of the crabs tries, starts trying to climb out, all the rest of them are going to pull that crab down. Because if, you, if I can't have something, then you can't either. Right? Okay. So, let's get some clarity here. All right, show me the three of pentacles, please. Okay, look, five of wands is at the bottom of the deck. All right, this is a differing of opinion. This is an ego battle. It's not the five of swords, but I'm still getting that it's trivial. It, it's not even worth fighting over, arguing over. Differing of opinion also. It really could be just that basic. Differing of opinion. Show me this three of pentacles energy. Now, this three of pentacles represents the other person in this situation or the person that you're connected to, but it also represents questioning whether or not this is actually a beneficial team situation. Like, are we actually working together? Oh, this three of pentacles also represents this individual needing to work on themselves because the Three of Pentacles does represent, or at least can represent self-mastery, right? Okay, clarify this Three of Pentacles. What is this Three of Pentacles? And can you answer this question for us, please, in terms of whether this is compatible, whether we're actually working together? Show me the Three of Pentacles, please. Oh, damn. Well, all right, the Hierophant. Ooh, okay, for somebody here, I just heard that tells you something. Maybe you're proficient in reading Tarot, okay, and you recognize what the Hierophant means, or you remember what I was saying about the Hierophant before. This tells you something. This confirms that this individual, and especially with the way that this card flew out and fell on the floor, I mean strength. There, there, is, real, there is real weight behind this energy, or spirit really wanted to emphasize this. This person is caught in, in, in traditionalism. And what I just heard is, it's never going to change. It, okay, and so, so that makes sense. The instant, um, gosh, I almost don't, I have trouble saying this, so maybe I'm not using the correct words. The institutions are not gonna change. The traditionalist 
when you're looking at when you're when you're identifying with this these traditions or whatever that fundamentally is not going to change what can change here and maybe i'm just speaking to this situation specifically but what does change here is the involvement with it okay you can either say yes to it or you can say no to it but you're not going to get the fundamentals of this institutionalized energy or mindset or way of thinking to change and that's where the five of wands and the trivialness of this element the differing of opinion comes into play and that's okay and that's where the energy of your you might as well just like let it go and move on like not even try and argue or fight it because it's not going to change and maybe we're maybe we're saying this person also is not going to change until they recognize realize or decide to rise above this but that has to be their choice, right? You can't force them to do that. You or whomever this is for, I really feel like you're the viewer, maybe you're the viewer here, but whomever is on the other side of this situation, in the Two of Wands, Knight of Cups, Four of Wands, you are rising above this. You are choosing to rise above this. You are choosing, have, a, have an opportunity or choice to make a change, but this person is, is not, at least not there yet, okay? Show me the Three of Pentacles, please. What, anything else about the Three of Pentacles? Oh. All right. The Hanged Man is the overall energy at the bottom of the deck. We have the Three of Swords that came out here, and it fell on the Two of Wands, Knight of Cups, Four of Wands. Yeah. There is heartbreak here. And then the rest of the cards that came out, because we're clarifying the Three of Pentacles here, you have the Hierophant, you also have the Ten of Cups, and then the Knight, I'm sorry, the Page of Wands. Uh, the Page of Wands, I feel like... Page of Wands feels like a child. This person wants to have a child. You may even want to have a child. And it may have been a situation in which the two of you were thinking about starting a family together because you, you have this Page of Wands with the Ten of Cups and the Hierophant, which would also represent marriage. But something is heartbreaking here. Something has broken the heart and maybe even broken the trust of the individual who is now trying to decide where to go, what to do. And ultimately we have the Hierophant, oh shit, I'm sorry, not the Hierophant, the, um, the Hanged Man, and then the world. There's that world energy that I was seeing. Something happened here that caused the person who is questioning things to look at it from a different point of view. And it's not something trivial. It's something that broke their heart. It's a, it's something, it's some sort of betrayal. Some sort of, I wanna say betrayal of trust. And for somebody here, there is, what may have broken your heart is a realization of, oh my God, I would never wanna have children with you. And not to say, and maybe that's not to say, I don't know, I'm not trying to pass judgment on anybody. You know what I mean? I'm just, don't shoot the messenger, y'all. I'm just, I'm just reading the energies and interpreting them the best way that I can. But it feels like somebody here realized that they would not want to have that. You are that the other person here is not the type of man or woman or father or mother figure that they would want to have a child with because of something that happened. What happened? What's this three of swords? What happened? Oh, damn. The five of swords. Oh, shit. What I want to say here is a lack of maturity, which makes sense because one person was showing up as the King of Cups, the other person was showing up as the Page of Cups. A lack of maturity, maybe an, a, a highly aggressive nature, some sort of combative, competitive, winner-takes-all type of energy 
in which you may have realized this is not conducive to a loving family situation. This is, these are not the conditions that I would want to raise a child under. And there also could be family, familial elements to this. Like this person's family. Yes, which absolutely would uh, influence how this person grew up and subsequently how they react and or respond in the world, especially towards children. But there also could be st um, long standing, still standing elements of a family dynamic that is like not at all conducive to raising a child. Anything else for the Three of Swords? What happened here? Mm. Four of Pentacles. Yep. That was the, fi okay. That was the final straw. Um, and, a, and a lack of ability or a willingness to change for whatever reason, okay? You have the Three of Swords with the Five of Swords to the Four of Pentacles. So regardless as to whatever it is specifically, all right, take it as it resonates. But something here is extremely combative, is um, extremely destructive, is a lose-lose energy, um, and this is mostly in terms of having children or maybe even raising how you would how someone would want to raise a child or how someone would ultimately end up raising their child. OK, regardless as to whether they want they're honest about it or they're conscious, they're like consciously aware of it or not. Ultimately, there is an element here that is really not conducive to raising a healthy and well-balanced child. OK, but regardless as to whatever it is, there is a lack of willingness to change completely 100% to the point where it feels like someone is just digging their heels in and they're digging their heels in because they know if this element is going to have to is going to change they're going to have to do some soul searching and some healing some inner child work some reparenting of their own selves in order to be ready and fit to be the parent of a child Overall energy here clarifying this Three of Swords here is the Ten of Pentacles. And in there are a lot of Tens here, okay? You have the Ten of Wands, right? You have the Ten of Cups, and then you have the Ten of Pentacles. Ten, ten, ten. This is an ending. The fall is near. Oh boy. Okay. And now this Ten of Pentacles, in this situation, yes, it's an ending. Um, it's a completion, I should say. We also had the world show up, which represents completion. But the Ten of Pentacles here feels like uh, future planning. Okay, looking off, uh, taking what it is that you know you want, and taking what it is you have in front of you in terms of getting that, achieving that, and looking off into the future and being practical about it and being like, is this actually going to work? Is this actually going to give me, to get me where I want to go? Ten of Pentacles here is representing your long-term goals. Which makes perfect sense because somebody here is trying to figure out which way do I go. You may have already come to the conclusion, but I am hearing in, or you may have already found an answer, but I, I, I just heard in conclusion... Okay, so in conclusion, spirit, in conclusion, in terms of this, <gasps> look at that. Look, 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 the moon. Ha ha ha. Remember last time I told you guys I was wearing a Goosebumps shirt and I said I, I should have wore the moon for YouTube. Well, the next time I go on YouTube, I'll wear it. Here we are. And here's the moon. In conclusion, in conclusion, spirit, please. Yeah. Oh, hey, in conclusion. In conclusion. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, okay. It's not what I thought. It's still pretty strong, though. Can't make this stuff up, guys. In conclusion, like I said, I feel like you've already made your decision or you have an idea of, like, this has brought enough clarity to you to be like, okay. All right, I know, what, I know what I need to do. But in conclusion, here's some confirmation for you. Overall energy is the Eight of Cups. Walking away. Leaving the past behind and starting all over. 
but not necessarily starting all over. Yes, starting over with a new person, a new relationship, a new situation, but also from a much wiser point of view, right? Okay. In conclusion, you have the moon, right? With the queen of pentacles, which is also kind of giving me empress vibes. Um, but the queen of pentacles is the wife and mother, okay? She's very nurturing still. She's stern, okay? She may be one to give a bit of tough love, but she's still nurturing. But what the queen of pentacles represents here is independence, okay? And sovereignty, very nine of pentacles type of energy, right? Which nine of pentacles is oftentimes referred to as the pre-empress energy. And I am getting empress vibes from this. I'm getting abundance. I'm getting, you can do for yourself, okay? I'm also getting that you have a strong head on your shoulders, all right? You're not about the BS, okay? Not to say you don't like to have fun and you don't know how to have fun, but you're not about, you're not about no BS, especially when it comes to your family, right? The moon with the queen of wands. I'm sorry, the Queen of Pentacles. The moon is representing illusion, okay? And then the last card that came out here that flew out on the floor, I thought it was the tower. It's not, it's the emperor in reverse. And mind you, remember, I'm getting, I was getting Empress vibes from the Queen of Pentacles before I even saw the emperor. This person is not the, is not the father and husband the leader that you are looking for, that you desire to have in your life. And the moon is representing the illusion of this. The illusion is being broken. Something is not as it seems. I mean, also kind of getting a little bit of a bait and switch type of energy. Like it's not as it seems in terms of the fact that this person may be presenting themselves to you as an emperor. emperor right but they're not and that's the illusion and i think you know this and you know this man i think you know this i think your intuition is telling you this yeah because the moon would represent intuition also okay I want to leave it there, but I also kind of want to get a closing message from the or from this Oracle deck here. Yeah. Last shuffle. Okay, closing message, please, spirit. Closing message please <laughs> okay good choices is at the bottom of the deck expect a positive outcome from the good choices you have made in the past closing message closing guidance oh and then we have poor choices that came out oh shit think again before making any decision at this time caution is needed there's a hidden problem Oh my goodness. Anything else? Woo! Okay. Well, don't take these, but I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave this here because it's showing itself again. Good choices. Okay. But then what also has come out here is hidden secrets. Careful of superficial appearances or making decisions without all facts. Act with discernment. Then you have gateway of gifts. Keep doing what you're doing and your goodwill will come back to you tenfold. And then you have your time is now. You are at the right place at the right time. You have to do what you are meant to do. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please, if this resonated for you, please consider tapping that like button for me. Uh, you could leave a comment in the comments section down below claiming this energy for yourself. Um, and also subscribe if you feel so inclined to do so. And if you would like more frequent messages, 
at least more frequent than here on YouTube, um, check out Patreon. Consider pa checking out Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. With that, I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon or whenever spirit calls me to. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye.